Hi, my name is Slizwack from GHST, and today I'm going to show you how to do cold water extractions. Stay tuned. Okay, if you're going to do a cold water extraction, uh, we're going to do it actually using our bubble magic machine. You'll find a link for that in the description. What we're like I said, you're going to need several things. First thing that we're going to need is we're going to need some of our some of our bubble magic hash bags. I've got them laid out right here so we can get ready. We've also got an internal bag for the machine. We've also got some some ice for our cold water extraction. We've got about 780 grams of our organic material. We've got several cut up buckets that we're going to show you how we're going to use. We've got another bucket and we've got some some bottled water, only because our water is from the uh, faucet is kind of has a bunch of solids in it. So, with that being said, let's get started. Now, let's talk about this machine that we have here. Uh, you'll find a link to this machine in the description. What this is is a five-gallon Bubble Magic uh, washing machine. You can find them in your grow shops. You can find them online. What we'll what we'll do, like I said, this is a five-gallon model. We'll have a link to these in the description where probably, hopefully, you can get a little bit, get them a little bit cheaper. So, like I said, there's a couple things we want to do. Step one is we want to take our, we're going to use a mesh, we're going to put our organic material in a mesh bag before we put it in our machine. It's going to keep all the leaves, the little tiny leaves and bits from coming out of our, coming through our hose and going through our bags. It's going to keep it a little bit cleaner on the end. So. We're going to go ahead and do that right now. What this is going to do for us is at the end, it's also going to allow us to easily freaking dispose of all of our, our used organic material. And what that's going to do is because once we, once we extract all the essential oils, we're actually going to end up with a pile of almost literal mush. So doing it this way it makes it a little bit easier for me to actually go ahead and dispose of that mush ball. So this is about 780 grams of material. Normally I get between doing it the old method by hand, I end up with about a 10, an eight to 12% yield. Um, in my experience with this machine, this bubble magic machine, I'm ending up with a, a higher yield with less work and I'm actually beating up my material a lot less. All right, now that I've got all that in there, I don't want to shake it too much because I don't want anything to get out of there. I'm going to zip this up on the top. There's a little piece of Velcro there where I can lock that zipper. I'm going to go ahead and make sure I close that up. I'm going to set that to the side. I'm going to open this up because what I'm going to do is I'm going to layer it. I'm going to put ice on the bottom, then I'm going to put my material in the bag, then I'm going to put ice on the top. So I'm actually going to use this bag, I'm going to split this bag in half actually. So here we go. Now the reason I'm putting ice on the top and the bottom is simply because the ice is going to do, the, do a lot of the work. And what I mean is the ice is going to rub against itself and the material. It's going to rub against itself and the material, and that's the action of that is what's going to cause it to actually freaking gradually freaking massage those trichobes out. Now that we've got all of our material in there, we've got our ice in there. Come on over here, and we'll we'll show you how it looks from the in, from the top. Because what I need to do in order for this to work properly, I need to have some ice in there, or some water in there rather. And I'm taking a gallon of my bottled water, just dumping it in. I don't want to go any higher than my drain hose. Ideally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this run for about 20 minutes. And then I'm going to freaking come back and check it. 
while that's running, actually I can dump the rest of this in here. All right. With this machine, all I'm going to end up having to do is set the timer to 15 minutes. There we go, and it will start going. And as you can see in there, you can see it's just beating up that material just a little bit on the bottom. You probably can't hear me. So we're going to go ahead and stop right here and take a little break. What we've been doing is we've had our machine, we've run it three times at 15 minutes. You'll notice that all the ice is dissolved, or most of it rather, is dissolved. Excuse me, what we're going to do now is we're going to pop some freaking latex glove on, gloves on and we're going to I'm going to show you how to set up your bubble bags. This is where our cut up buckets come into play. As you can see, three of my buckets, the bottoms are cut out and actually the last one has holes in the bottom. That's because with this bubble magic machine Everything's already agitated now. We've already run this. It's agitated. It's good to go. And all we have to do is strain it out. And what that's going to do is that's going to take the strain off of having to shake it back and forth. And you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. But before that, let's go ahead and set up our bubble bags. Now, our extraction bags come in several different uh, d several different measurements, several different microns. They come in 160, they come in 220, they come in 120, they come in 73, and they come in 25. And I'm going to tell you the order that we're going to put them in. Keeping in mind, our material is in a bag right inside there that measures 220. So I'm going to take my 220 bag and actually put it to the side. I'm not even going to use that. And I'm going to start with my 160. I'm going to take my 160, take it, put it through my first, my first half bucket, fold it over the lip, and then pull the draw cord just to get it a little bit tight. And what this is gonna do is this is gonna allow my, uh, my mixture that has my extracted uh, botanical oils in it, it's gonna allow my mixture along with the ice water to drain out of this tube and you'll see what I'm talking about here in just a second. So that was my 160. Now I'm going to put in my 120. I'm just going to take it, push it all the way down, push it through there, freaking fold it over the top. Tighten the drawstring. All right, and now I'm going to do my My 73, just double checking here. Yes, my purple is my 73. And like I said, I'm just going to take that, fold it over, just probably about maybe two or three inches. Make sure everything, make sure my flap is flat. Pull it tight with the draw cords. Now, this is my 73. This is my... Let me see here. This is my 120. So this is my 73. This is my 120. And I'm just going to actually set them in there like this. Okay? This is my 160. So when I set them in there like that, it's going to make it free, free flowing through the bottom. So when you see it, I'm actually going to end up taking it and just draining this hose right through there. And it's going to immediately leave, have my extractions left over so I don't really have to shake it. So 
But for my 25, I'm actually going to put in my last bucket with the holes in it. Because my 25, normally, I still have to agitate it a little bit. So, putting this in here, and just like the other ones, I'm just going to freaking draw this string a little bit tight. Just to make sure that my bag stays on. So, now, and I'm going to put this actually in this. Now all these are going to sit over here in my bucket, which I have inside of another tray, just in case of some spillage. Now that I have my machine raised, we're going to give it one, one more agitation before we kick everything off. All right. Now that our machine, our agitations are done, what we're going to do is we're actually just going to drain it through and we're going to drain it into our progressive bags, our extraction bags. Super easy. Be careful when you pull your cap off of this because a lot of times it's going to pop out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lean it over here and you're going to see how much stuff just starts building up. Now that we have all that done, as you can see, I'm just shaking that out just a little bit. We've got a lot of foam in there. But as you can see, just me shaking it around just that little bit has got that all set up. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a spoon and I'm going to freaking start pulling this stuff out. And I'll show you guys exactly what we come up with. All right. And this first one is going to be our 120 bag. Let's go ahead and scoop this out. We're going to scoop this out. As you can see there, still got a little bit of ice in it, but yeah. And that's bag number one. We go here to the next bag. Still got a little bit, still got a little bit of stuff in it. But the fact that these bags are all cloth on the side makes a huge difference. Up against the bottom there. Like I said, we're going to run this material a couple more times, so I'm not too worried about getting everything off of here right now. What I'm more worried about is keeping everything cold, so I'm going to pop this back into here. Pull this container out. my 25 bag back on there. I'm going to take this one, and this has all of our water in it. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to dump it back in there. I'm going to let it go for another cycle of 15 minutes. Okay, here we are once again. We freaking, we it actually ended up running our material about four times. So this is what we ended up with. This is our 160. This is our 120. This is our 73, and this is our 25. Now, before we put this in, in our freezer to dry, 
there's one more step that I like to do that assists me in the drying process anyway. Um, now my 160, I just let it dry out normally. I'm not in a hurry for that. My 120, uh, I'll go ahead and show you the process that I use for that because what it does is, it, it's a simple process. Let me go ahead and show you. What I have here, some of the materials that I use is I have what's known as a pressing screen. I have a towel doubled over and I have a small rolling pin. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this, take this pressing screen, which is a 25 micron pressing screen, by the way. I'm going to take this material, take it right here. I'm going to take this, take this spoon and scrape it all onto the pressing screen. Now, now that it's all on the pressing screen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to extract as much moisture as I can with a little bit of pressure. Going to take my going to take my pressing screen. Going to fold it over like this. Then I'm going to fold my towel over because that's what's going to soak up all of our moisture. Then I'm going to freaking just give it a couple of rolls. Don't want to roll it too hard. And when I open it back up, bam, I have a nice little patty. That's what we got for our for our 120. Okay, we'll put that right there. Okay, now this is our. This is our 75, and you'll notice, you'll see all the moisture in that. But all that is going to come right out. Just like we pulled it out of the 120, we're just going to freaking scrape it all in there. Going to be a substantial bit more, but I don't know about you, but historically, my 120 probably bag probably yields the most. Some people don't even use a 120 or 160 bag. For me, it's just my personal preference. All right. Hopefully, if I can remember, we'll have some weights for these down at the bottom so you'll know how much they weigh. And these are going to be the wet weights when we, pre when we press most of the stuff out, as you can see, because this is still going to dry out a little bit more. And one of the reasons I put it in my freezer, some people use a freeze dryer, but I'm not that fancy. I haven't got to that level yet. So I'm using my freezer. Oh, there we go. Okay. All right. And then again, we're going to freaking just fold this thing over, making sure it stays in the middle of there. We're probably going to move it to a different section of our towel. There we go. How about this section right there? Yeah, that looks good. Fold our towel over again. Take our little rolling pin. Boop, boop, boop. And what this does is that pressing screen is 25 microns, so I don't want to press it too hard because with the 75, well, actually, I don't want it to freaking get all sticky and stuff and mess up my pressing screen. All I want to do is kind of add a light pressure to it so it pushes the moisture out and it can be wicked out by the towel. Now, pajam! This is our 73 here. A nice big fat patty right there. Okay. And now this is our 25. This is our last one. Still out still out for debate on what, what's better, the 73 or the 25, but we got them both. And man, this is looking nice. Just look at all that coming off of there. 
I don't know about you, but one of my favorite things to do is I'm going to turn these into temple balls. And that's going to allow me to age and mature these this hash and get a, a nice, nice, smooth flavor. It's going to make it almost turn into a full melt hash. You could just about dab it once you turn it into temple balls. So stay tuned for that. There'll be more videos about how to do that. Now that's a pretty good sizable ball of hash here. All right. We're cheap, so we want to get that last little bit out. All right. All right. Okay. Now, again, we're going to fold it over. Let's go this way this time. Okay. Let's see here. Where's... We'll go, we'll go like this. Okay. And like I said before, all we're going to do is we're just going to fold it over. Light pressure with our roller. Allowing that towel to wick that moisture away. And it's going to set you... Right away, it's going to set you down the road on your drying process. Because what you want to make sure to do is you want to make sure this hash is fully dry before you store it. Because if not, it's going to lead to mold. All right. Looking at this 25, look at that 25 patty right there. Look at that, 20 thief. Two thief. All right. And you might be wondering, how do I get the rest of this stuff off here? What I, what I normally do is I take my, little frick, my, take my little pressing screen, I put it in the freezer in a, pla in a Ziploc bag and let it freeze over the course of a couple weeks. And what it will do is it will give me some fine, fine golden brown Hash, great for smoking. Once again, my name is Slizwack. If you got any, any value out of this, lean into it. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. This has been Slizwack from GHST, and we just learned how to do ice water extractions with our bubble, wa our bubble magic ice water extraction machine. We'll see you next time.